We are here. I'm Bonita, and I'm here with my dear friend Mariam Sardari. Hi, um, Mariam and I have known each other for a very long time. We've worked together professionally and we're very good friends. In fact, my entire family adores Mariam's entire family. <laughs> um, and I asked Mariam to come and join us because um, we are sharing our voices of freedom. And Mariam, you came to this country when you were young. Your entire family came here for this opportunity of freedom. Yes. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about like, I mean, you came from a well-off, highly educated family. You had a very supportive upbringing. A lot yes. Of, yeah. Yes. So please tell I'm, us I'm, a little about that. I'm happy to say, yes, my family was very considered very progressive at the time and um, very educated. My, my dad actually, uh, is educated in the US. He grew up in Massachusetts and went to, you know, Harvard and Berkeley and all that, those wonderful places. And um, then just like everyone used to do when his grad education was done, he went back to serve his country at the time. And uh, so after the revolution and um, the upheaval that took came to pass in the country, uh, it became evident that things were going to be a little more difficult and opposition had already been formed, you know, against the regime that had taken over and there were many different groups of oppositions and um, my, <laughs> My very outspoken family from my mother's side were all members of these different groups. And uh, anyway, long, long history of that. But uh, when chaos was the rule of the country, <laughs> they were pursued heavily by the Revolutionary Guard. And so a lot of the younger I mean, younger people, I want to say college age, and then a lot of teens um, who spoke against what was happening were pursued and they were put in prisons. A lot of them were executed and um, my family members included and came to a point where a war had started with Iraq and borders were closed. Uh, my immediate family was not engaging in any of that, but what is it? There is a hair. <laughs> My uh, oh. Cat hair everywhere. <laughs> okay. My immediate family was not active in any of that. At the time I was a lot younger and my brother who's even younger than me, you know, we were just like, not even finished with middle school. He was an elementary school child. So we were very young to participate in any of this. And um, truth be told, a little bit afraid because I came to see a lot. And um, so lucky for us, my father was given an opportunity to go abroad in order to train a group of people. He was the head of the exploration, the oil company, national oil company in the in the country. So uh, a group of the experts were given an assignment to go to Libya, <laughs> exactly where the revolution happened years later, <laughs> exactly wow. the same spot. And um, basically it was an assignment from the government. So they all accepted it, but we kept it to ourselves that we knew we were not going to come back. We were going to try to leave from there. And this is what happened. Um, I had family in, in the US who basically 
wanted us to come and join them here. And uh, after the assignment was over, after a couple of years, my dad's assignment was over. He did not want to renew. And we took a little trip to Spain and we came to the US then. We were lucky because things happened rather smoothly for us. There was no issues with uh, uh, visitors visas at the time. And so we came and soon after we started looking to see what we need to do in order to change our status from visitor to resident. Yeah. Um, so that's how we came came here. That is, and I, I just need to ask the, um, the things that made it unsafe for your family, how outspoken you would have been, you were not crazy out there, you know, doing anything that we would consider illegal or immoral. You were just saying all people are humans, all people have rights, you know, people have the right to be educated, people have the right to be safe, and this is what endangered your entire family's lives. Well, the fact was that the uh, revolution came to pass because of the fact that people were voicing displeasure of what was happening at that time with the Shah and the, you know, the ruling party. And so people felt there was a huge gap between the rich and the poor. And, you know, um, the, the religious clerics, they started talking about letting you know more people having more rights and things like that this is how they began and there was the main um religious i guess uh leader that had been um exiled so he was very active very outspoken and he quickly gathered a following and his entrance back into the country was when the revolution had like succeeded and uh, you know the other side was victorious and mm -hmm. but soon after as in many other regimes who claim to be very democratic and being on the side of the people soon established a pretty much a dictatorship and killed off the voices of the people who were still wanting more freedom in a lot of different areas but being able to speak up and they were soon very very quickly were either put in prison or they were executed and a lot of them included the youth i mean i had cousins who were just a couple of years older than i was at that time and i was almost 14. Mm -hmm. so you can imagine 15 16 you know 18 year olds being put in prison they were killed right away their parents were put in prison and you know, when you see it up close, you really don't want to speak up in any way at all. And right. and I was, you know, maybe a wuss or I don't know, just at the time, you know, you try to kind of put your head down and go about your business because you don't want other people in your family to get into trouble. So um, we kept it quiet. However, you start planning, okay, they don't want, they don't want anyone to do anything so I don't want to stay here mm -hmm. and we wanted to be somewhere where you're free to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about you can worship or not worship you can you know get to choose basically a place where you have choices for your life so this was the land that offered it and I'm sure people watching hearing what you have to say see parallels between what you just described and what has been happening is happening in our country you know yeah. a, a president who is trying to create a personal dictatorship uh, people now peacefully marching in the streets saying our voices deserve to be heard trying to be uh, subjugated so that these peace marches would turn into ugly riots, destructive riots that destroy their own community as happens, you know, following the death of Martin Luther King Jr. And, but over here, thankfully, 
the riots were averted and it was shown that the peace protesters were not the cause of the riots and the riots were turned away. So we're able to voice our freedom. This must be a very emotional thing for you to see this happening now after what you've been through. Oh, yes, I was, there have been a lot of triggers, even though uh, I like to believe that I've worked on a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> having left the place quite a while back and I've pretty much grown up here but um and I haven't really been back I know I could go I just haven't been back but my parents have and you know I have a lot of people who, close to me visiting and they do talk about a lot of changes having taken place however the essence is the essentials are still the same, you know, obviously that's another d dictatorship under the guise of religion, but um, yes, a lot of, a lot of memories came back after all of this began and it was unfortunate because you feel progress has been made on this side of the world and, you know, people are actually vying to go backwards and it was you know, a little confusing. Do you feel as the peace marches are evolving, going from just people expressing pain to now like people dancing and singing and putting up artwork and getting support from a multi-generational, you know, multi-colored community? Is this in any way um, cathartic for you or any sort of relief or are you still processing a lot? No, I think it's beautiful to see that, you know, I, I still believe that deep down people have the capacity for compassion and for peaceful existence, you know, and the ones who have been taught otherwise i think it's just a learned behavior and we've all been in everywhere this is global to we've been taught to fear something that's different mm -hmm. because it's an unknown to us but pretty much in every case once there is a chance to see the other side one realizes that okay we're not that different and difference isn't a negative thing and it's not a four letter word, you know, and you can, you can appreciate differences and still coexist in a peaceful way. Um, so I, I have hope, I mean, people, you know, we have the young generation who I believe just have come into the world upgraded already, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> two point versions that, you know, they don't even understand what the big fuss is you know like why would you make a big deal out of like somebody's color or mm -hmm. you know my daughter all of her friends this whole generation i mean i see it across the board i mean they're all at the forefront of these marches and they're very very outspoken about what in the world and we have a lot to learn from all of them and i'm very proud that they are that way so i do have hope that things will end up getting resolved and peace will reign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just some of this perhaps needed to come to the surface for light to be shone on it because if you're not aware of the darkness, you can't shine the light to bring it into light. So it's unfortunate okay. that this still exists and it has to be a subject to be discussed. It is very unfortunate, but we can still join forces and peacefully, peacefully say what we need to say. Like you said, the rallies were changed now into more peaceful demonstrations. And, uh, you know, I, I attended one and it was very peaceful. It was very uplifting, if you will, and you feel kind of that connection that we are all one right as your background and, says <laughs> <laughs> and i just want to add like i've been side by side with you 
as you, you have not just been in the United States living your life and thinking about yourself, you, you uh, for those of you who do not know Mariam, she has a background as a therapist and an artist and um, is an extraordinary counselor. You're a life coach, an amazing life coach, one of the best I've ever seen. Thank you. Very talented, gifted artist. You're a very soulful, spiritual person with big loving heart. I have seen you voice your, share, share information, voice your opinion and go forward about um, levels of, of um, disregard for humans when you see these things come up in our government. And um, I have seen you support people who are speaking up when racism and nationalism um, and oppression has caused pain to those you care about. Like you are someone, you stand up when someone needs to stand up. You speak your voice, which makes me glad that you're in this country where you're not, you are not, have not been executed or arrested for that. I'm quite grateful for that as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate that you now stand up and share your voice for our brothers and sisters who are saying, hey, us too, we don't want to be executed or arrested for doing this. Um, but you, you're you not naive. I mentioned this because, um, and I definitely want to talk about your all of this history another time because that's a whole story on its own. But you're not naive as to what happens in this country. You are very aware of the racism and the sexism and the segregation and the false arrest and, you know, uh, the unnecessary brutality. You have been in the forefront, you know, with this whenever, you know, whenever you have been called to it. But you still go forward with hope. You still go forward with this beautiful vision of everyone coming together. Do you have any inspiration or thought or wisdom or how it is that you can have been through everything you've been through and still have this beautiful vision of all of us together in harmony? Um, thank you for, for your vote of confidence <laughs> and the and the support, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for seeing me in that light. Um, but I have to admit that it hasn't come about uh, smoothly. However, uh, when at the end of the day, when I sit there and think, you know, it has served me better when I have personally focused on what it is I wish to see rather than what it is I don't want to see because um, as healers and energy workers like you know both of us are we know where th thought goes energy flows so why not align our thoughts with something that is beautiful rather than focusing on the ugliness and what is distressing us because it's going to manifest it <laughs> so let's let's manifest what we wish to bring about because the universe doesn't know the difference so um that's basically in a nutshell why i like to align with hope and with positivity it's not out of being you know just silliness or whatever even if that is the case uh, i don't mind doing it because it brings me to a better place mm -hmm. if i keep to the thought that we've all come here for a purpose and i choose that as a human being in this incarnation as a 3d vessel mm -hmm. we do have some free will so choice falls under that title. Choosing to align with light has served me better, mm -hmm. basically. So, and, and if I'm feeling better, people around me also benefit. <laughs> this is true. This is true. 
<laughs> oh, thank you, Mariam. And um, for people who want to get in touch with you, can you give us again the name of your website? Yes, it is called The Core Shift. And um, I also have a Facebook page if they choose to go on that. But the website is coreshift.com, thecoreshift.com. And I'm happy to respond to whoever wants to contact me for whatever questions that they might have. Great, great. And um, thank you all for joining us. Thank and you. Yes, and uh, we wish you all goodbye for now, but you know, Mariam and I always have a lot to say, so we'll be back. <laughs> thank you, Bonita. <laughs> thank you, Mariam. Thank you, everyone.